Hi guys, I'm Flapping Keep, and for my very first official game review, I'm doing a game that will always hold a special place in my heart. That is of course, Spyro the Dragon. Spyro was one of my favourite games growing up as a kid, and it's still one of my favourites today. But, enough from me, let's get into this review. But first let me tell you, Spyro the Dragon is a 3D platformer created in 1998 by Insomniac and Sony for the PlayStation 1. The game starts off with the protagonist, Nasty Nor, turning all of the dragons except for Spyro into crystal, and this sets up the rest of the game, with Spyro tasked to free his fellow dragons and defeat Nasty Nor. There are six homeworlds to explore, each with their own unique levels, setting, and enemies. Spyro has two main attacks at his disposal. One is his ability to shoot flames and burn enemies to a crisp. Uh, well... Jim? The other attack Spyro has is his charge, which is great for dealing with pesky enemies with armor on. And it's also a great way to get around. You can buy with jumping. It looks hilarious. Whee! But I think Spyro sums it up to be. I'll tell you what to do with those creatures. Smash them, Spyro! Stamp them out and squish them and squash them! <laughs> uh huh. How about charge them and flame them? We are dragons after all. Another way of getting around each level is by gliding. Gliding is a great gameplay mechanic for Spyro as it is used to reach tricky or difficult areas of a level. And if not done right, it will cost you in the form of falling to your death. The enemies in the game are pretty standard and lack a bit of variety, with them either being too big to charge, but being vulnerable to flame, or being small and covered in armor. There are some exceptions to this, but I would have liked to see more of it. But in saying that, there was one enemy that was feared by even the largest dragons. Be on the lookout for attack frogs. They are cold blooded killers. Attack frogs? And yes, used to you be heard them right. Nice wall. Attack frogs. So, these must be the terrifying attack frogs. I've heard so much of it. Ah! To help Spyro deal with the, um, attack frogs, here's Sparks, his dragonfly companion. Sparks has two jobs in the game. The first is to protect and indicate Spyro's health. Sparks' color changes every time Spyro takes a hit. He starts off gold, and after a hit, he turns blue. And after another, he turns green. But after a third hit, Sparks disappears altogether, and Spyro loses Sparks' protection and his ability to grab gems. If Spyro takes a hit without sparks, he dies and you lose a life. This is a lesson that I think games would say could learn from good old Spyro, as many newer games don't really punish players for dying anymore. Although lives are fairly easy to come by in Spyro, being punished with losing lives and ultimately losing the game makes those moments without sparks or gliding around high mountain areas that much more tense. As I previously mentioned, Sparks' other job is to help Spyro collect the gems scattered around each level. Sparks can grab gems that are in a close proximity of Spyro, and seeing that you need every single gem in the game to get 100%, Sparks is well worth his weight in butterflies. I'm sure you guys could sympathise with me when I have completed a level only to be missing one or two gems, and having to backtrack through the entire level trying to find it. This is one of the really annoying things about the game, especially if you want 100% completion. Apart from the gems, there are of course the dragons to free from crystal. All up, there are 80 dragons to free throughout the game. Some are very easy to find, and some are a little bit more tricky. Every time you free a dragon, they give you a piece of dialogue. Some give you helpful hints about each level, and some, well, are completely pointless. Thank 
you for releasing me. Thank you for releasing me. Thank you for releasing me. Oh, thank you for releasing me. Thank you for releasing me. Say what you want about dragons, but they have fantastic manners. Spyro the Dragon, teaching kids good manners since 1998. The dragons in Spyro also have really kick-ass names. They help set the scene for the when game. See There's Argus the Dragon and Revelo the Dragon. But of course, who could ever forget Cletus the Dragon? Okay, so not all the dragons have cool names. But you know, there's always that one guy who has an awkward name that doesn't make any sense. The levels themselves in Spyro lack a bit of variety, with many levels feeling very similar to one another. The levels in the first couple of homeworlds are considerably shorter than levels later on in the game, and the difficulty of each level also increases as you progress through the game, however you never really notice this as you play through the game, as the difficulty doesn't drastically jump from level to level. However, if you look at the first and last levels of the game, you can clearly see a big difference in the game difficulty. It's like one of those all-you-can-eat buffets, where you pile up all your food. At the beginning, it's very easy to eat it, but as you get further and further through, it becomes more difficult. Or, that doesn't make any sense, it's like any other game, where it starts off easy and it progressively gets harder. Whatever. Spyro the Dragon has a very smooth difficulty curve, which is a great touch for a fun game. However, Spyro is just that, a great, fun game. Gamers wanting a challenging, fast-paced, pedal-to-the-metal game won't find it in Spyro the Dragon. But to those people, I say, go and play your Call of Duty, because I'm quite happy mucking about on my happy little Spyro game. One complaint I would have about the levels in Spyro the Dragon is that especially in the larger levels of the game, large areas become empty with little or nothing to explore. This was vastly improved in the sequels of Spyro the Dragon, which is a good thing as it is something that hampers the origin. Although, in saying this, there are still little level gimmicks scattered throughout the game that make playing the level very enjoyable. Really? Really? You guys are going to move the only piece of land over this giant chasm? And you wonder why your tourism industry is failing. Another feature of some levels of the game is Supercharge. Supercharge makes Spyro invincible and gain ridiculous speeds, which you can use to take down enemies and jump giant gaps. I really like the idea of the Supercharge, as they add a little extra variety to some of the levels. Heck, the treetops level is pretty much all Supercharges. Each homeworld has two special levels that play differently from normal levels. The first of these levels are the flights. Now, I know a lot of people don't like the flight levels, because in order to complete them, you need to collect everything in one run which can be difficult. But I actually like the flight levels, purely because there's something different. I mean, Spyro is a dragon with wings. So shouldn't he be able to fly? The second of these levels are the boss levels. There are six bosses, one for each homeworld, with Nasty Nork being the final boss of the game. The other bosses are Toasty, Dr. Shep, Blowhard, Metalhead, and Jacques. Out of all of these bosses, my favourite would have to be Toasty. I mean, the dragon right before you fight him says that. Nasty Nork has put one of his most devious henchmen in charge of the artisan world. And this genius henchman turns out to be... A sheep. Yep. A sheep. I guess it must be hard to find good help in the dragon world, eh Nasty? Speaking of bosses, I have to say that for being the main protagonist of the game, Nasty Nork has to be the worst boss fight in my video gaming experiences. I mean, if I had to do a top 10 most disappointing boss fights in video games, Nasty Nork would be hard to beat for the top spot. I mean, the guy is huge and scary. And what does he do when confronted by Spyro? Run away. So after chasing him, Spyro hits him with a flat. And what does he do? Run away again. So after chasing him some more, you hit him with another flame. And that's it. He's dead.
Seriously? Even the other bosses could take three hits. Honestly, the first time I beat this game, I was expecting Nasty Nork to spring back to life somehow and have an epic battle with me. But no. That's it. You win. Yay. Finally, we're up to the part of the review that I've been waiting for. The soundtrack. My god, the soundtrack is good. I mean, Spyro's title song alone was one of my favourites as a kid. Well, that and Pokemon. The soundtrack for Spyro the Dragon was created by Stuart Copeland, who was the drummer for the police. Stuart, I would just like to say thank you. Thank you from myself and all of Spyro's fans for creating one of the best soundtracks in gaming. Period. Just listen to this stuff. The music catches the mood of Spyro so well, and... Hold on. God damn chickens are ruining the music. That's better. You know, I really enjoyed playing Spyro the Jag. It's been far too long since I last played it. But I have to concede that while Spyro the Dragon was a fantastic game in 1998, and to me it still is, but I don't think Spyro holds up as well nowadays as it did back in the day. I mean, younger gamers don't have the same nostalgia factor that those of us who have played the game 16 years ago. Wait, really? 16? That doesn't make you, me feel old at all, does it? I will always have a biased opinion about Spyro the Dragon because, like I said at the start of this video, Spyro will always hold a special place in my heart. However, Spyro the Dragon does have its shortcomings. With its easy difficulty, lack of variety in levels and enemies, and even the camera at times makes playing the game frustrating. So if I have to give this game a rating, it will get a 7 out of 10. Spyro the Dragon is a good fun game, it is great to play on a lazy day. But all of your problems melt away as you play as the coolest little purple dragon in game. Hey guys, thanks for watching my very first video. I know it's a bit rough around the edges, but I hope you liked it. Feel free to leave a comment below. I would love to get your feedback. If you liked this video, why not subscribe? I mean, You'll be the first to catch all my new videos. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. For some reason. Thanks guys. Have a good one.